Today we talk about an archaeological discovery that is taking the world by storm, as well as an update as to what's been happening in Turkey and Syria, and the IDF issues instructions as to what to do in case there's ever an earthquake, God forbid, in Israel, a major earthquake in Israel. I'm Ben, and this is The Israel Guys. Welcome to The Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Guys, I'm ecstatic to be joining the Israel Guys as a weekly contributor. I'm in a new space, a new studio. So I appreciate your patience as we work out the kinks. Literally just had a sound panel fall off behind the camera. <laughs> it happens. Um, sometimes the only way to get a studio space ironed out is to be in it and working in it. So I appreciate your patience. I'm going to ask another thing of you. I know it's presumptuous, so just starting on this show. Uh, but I want you to do something really hard. I get the easy job. I get to sit behind my desk, write this show, research for hours, sit in, under the hot lights and talk to you on the camera. That's the easy part. Hard part is for you to take your mouse, scroll down under this video, find the little subscribe button, click it, click the bell next to it so you can be notified when a new video comes. If you really like it, maybe even peck out a little comment underneath. Maybe even, you know, take the link and send it to a friend and say, hey, I like this video, check it out. We're a small channel, we're trying to grow, we put a lot of work into these videos, and we very, very, very much appreciate if you would take the time to help us grow even just a little bit. Okay, so yesterday in the news, there was a rare gold bead found by the City of David on the pilgrimage road right next to the City of David uh, by a teenager. I'm going to cut to that video right now. It's a really cool video uh, showing the discovery. אני פתאום קולטת, הלל, מצאת פה זהב מלפני אלפיים שנה, שמישהי או מישהו יכל ללבוש פעם. אני זוכרת שפשוט שפכתי את הדליק למסננת, והתחלתי בעצם לשטוף את החומר. ואז פתאום אני רואה בפינה של המזננת משהו כזה נוצץ, שונה, שאני לא רואה בדרך כלל. כדי לבדות את מה שאני חשבתי, אני הלכתי לארכיאולוג, הארכיאולוג בעצם אישר לי שמצאתי חרוז דאו. Really כולם פה, כאילו, היו בהתרגשויות. most archaeological excavations. Such a bead is usually a part of a much larger cre existing creation made of other beads of gold or silver or semi-precious stones of various colors. I am speaking to you from the pilgrimage route, which is an ongoing excavation of the Israel Antiquities Authority and with the funding of the City of David Foundation. We're deep underground. In this excavation, we uncovered a street, the pilgrimage route, which goes up some 700 meters to the Temple Mount. So as they said, that bead was discovered on the pilgrimage road leading up from the Shiloh pool to the city of David. Uh, I mean, to the Temple Mount next to the city of David. Just a little geography here. The old city is up here. Shiloh pulls down here. City of David is on the slope in between. Historically, we have records that Pontius Pilate built this road from the Shiloh pool, because pilgrims, thousands, millions of pilgrims possibly, would come up to Jerusalem for the feast. They would come up, they would probably enter mainly through the southern entrance of Jerusalem, and they would congregate at the Shiloh pool. The Shiloh pool, which in, in the New Testament is called the Siloam pool. Uh, some believe it was a mikvah, a place of ritual um, immersion for purity in, in the Jewish custom. Also just a gathering place. It was huge, huge, huge pool. And then they would make their way by this highway, uh, by, this, by this huge road from that pool up to the Temple Mount. So archaeologists ha have had a general idea for a very long time as to where that pool might be. Did not know the uh, specific location. It wasn't until 2004 when Eli Shukran, at the time, I believe current director, head, archaeology of this, head archaeologist of the City of David, uh, he found it in 2004. So finding the pool... They knew the road had to be there, had to be there close. 
they started the search and found it really quickly and ever since then have been arduously uncovering and excavating that road up to the Temple Mount. And what they found has confirmed that discovery. They found all kinds of uh, gold coins, um, everyday use items like lamps and all, you know, all kinds of things like that from, from poor people, middle class people, and rich people. And this is one of those discoveries of an absolutely beautiful gold piece, probably from a bracelet or a necklace, uh, from a very wealthy person. This is a quote from uh, the director of the Israel Antiquities Authority, Eli Excusido, probably not pronounced correctly. Uh, he said, quote, even with today's advanced technology, creating something like this would be very complex. A close examination of this object fills one with a deep sense of admiration for the technical skills and ability of those who came before us many centuries ago. Why is this important? It's important because there's a growing movement, mainly in the United States, and mainly, I think, in the conservative Christian world, um, that says that the Temple Mount is not in the traditional location that, that most archaeologists believe it to be. They say that the Temple Mount is down in the city of David. The pilgrimage road from the Shilach Pool is huge, 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 cannot be stated enough piece of evidence as to where the actual location of the Temple Mount was and is today. Because you have historical sources that claim there was a Shilach Pool, that claim there was a massive pilgrimage road built by the Romans from the Shilach Pool up to the Temple Mount that was 26 feet wide, a third of a mile long, built out of stone, stairs, huge, you know, gutters and pipes and, every, you know, all the works connected to it. And modern archaeologists have found it. So presumably, wherever that road leads would have been the Temple Mount. And where does it lead? Up exactly to the traditional Temple Mount. And we know that road was used by not just the Romans, because some naysayers might say, oh, it was just, you know, the road that led up to the Antonio Fortress. It was an access road, you know, by the Romans. One, we have no record of such road. Two, it fits the description perfectly in historical sources of the pilgrimage road leading up to the temple. And three, it's discoveries like this. Stuff from everyday people uh, are found on that road. You know, gold, jewelry, coins, lamps, you know, things from poor people, things from rich people, things from middle class people. They're not the kind of people that are going up to the Antonio Fortress on a day-to-day -day basis. Proves there was a, there was a wide variety of, of groups that were using this road going somewhere specific in Jewish tradition and historical sources to the temple. There's even been uh, finds to confirm that, that priests use that road. Uh, back, I don't have the date right in front of me, but there was a, there was a pomegranate, um, a golden pomegranate bell found on that road with, with as a, basically a teeny little golden pomegranate with a little bell inside, uh, which fits the exact description in the Bible of, um, of the little golden bells that would have been on the hem of the high priest's robe that would have jingled as he walked. Which proves that more than likely the high priest used this road. I think it's really important because of this growing movement of those that deny the traditional location of the Temple Mount. It's a question. If the Temple Mount was not where archaeologists say it is, then why do you have a pilgrimage road lead to nowhere? Why does it lead up to the site where the temple's not and stop? Why does it not lead to the site in the city of David where the temple location deniers, as we kind of like to call them, say it is. Food for thought. Okay. Um, and Turkey, as many of you have heard, I'm sure, on Monday there was a massive, massive earthquake, a 7.8 magnitude on the Richter scale, uh, and leveled tens of thousands of homes. At this point, the death count is up to 17,000, I believe. Expected to continue to rise a lot over the next couple of days as they as they dig through more and more homes. Um, they're still pulling people out of the rubble every single day. Really, really terrible situation. I believe there's about 15,000 confirmed dead right now in Turkey, and then about uh, or, or about 14,000 I think in Turkey, and another three to four thousand already confirmed dead in Syria as well. Israel sent delegations. The day after, a very, very quick response on Israel's part, they sent uh, delegations of uh, search and rescue operators um, and food and water and supplies and generators and stuff. And um, 
they just sent a second delegation yesterday, I think with another 15 C-130s, hundreds and hundreds of tons of supplies, um, and also the equipment to set up a hospital, which I believe they're saying will be fully operational uh, by today, by the time you're seeing this video yesterday, basically. So that's happening in Turkey right now. Israel's doing all they can, along with a number of other countries who are also um, going, you know, full on in this rescue effort. In Syria is still a very, very, very bad situation. The White Helmets, uh, which got famous in Aleppo, these volunteer response group, uh, this kind of volunteer response group of rescue operators who dig people out of rubble uh, with missile attacks and that kind of thing. <laughs> Um, they've been on the ground working really, really hard. They're saying that there's four to five hundred people under trapped under each building. Um, and only, you know, about a few people kind of able to work on each building at a time. So really, really bad situation. It's a race against time is what they're saying. The White Helmets, I believe, have specifically asked for Israel to step in uh, with aid and support. Um, Netanyahu said that he received the request and the Syrian government came out and said that, let's see if what was the direct quote, um, the Syrian government said they reject the idea of receiving any help from Israel. So there's that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, not good. Um, we really need to be praying for the survivors and their families and those still trapped under the rubble and doing everything that we can and pray that Syria will be open to receiving aid from other countries. Um, let's just say that. Let's just let's pray that the government of Syria will not stand in the way of saving the lives of their own citizens. Also, the IDF Home Front Command has asked the public to familiarize themselves um, with the instructions in case there should be an earthquake in Israel. There's been little tremors off and on over the last couple of days, but nothing serious, thankfully, uh, so far. They say that if there were a major earthquake detected, um, air raid sirens would sound in the major cities and all the places with air raid sirens. Um, and that would also be combined with, with a call of earthquake from the air raid sirens. And there also would be an alert from the app. They're saying there's an app you can download from the IDF home front website. Uh, those in buildings should leave them if possible and get to an open area. And if it's not possible to leave the building in time, uh, enter a secure room, especially bomb shelters are, or you know the air raid shelters that are in place all over Israel already for missile attacks, rockets outside of Gaza, out of Gaza. Uh, those are the best if you do get in one to leave the doors open, windows open, uh, that kind of thing. And if you can leave the building, make sure to stay in an open area away from trees and telephone wires and that kind of thing. If you cannot get to a bomb shelter but are still in a house or in an apartment building, I say get to a corner of a room, get under a heavy piece of furniture, uh, something like that, anything that can protect you from falling debris. If you are driving a car, uh, stop on the side of the road and wait till the quake stops. And um, don't stop under a bridge or overpass. So there is that. And also, if there's a huge earthquake and you live near the coast, they say to get as fast as you can after the earthquake stops, about a kilometer off the coast, uh, from the coast, in case there's a tsunami. If you can't get out fast, then get up to a fourth story of a building at least. All right, on a lighter note, uh, there was a man arrested this week at the Ben Gurion Airport 
for trying to smuggle uh, lizards and snakes into the country. Uh, I'm just going to say, guys, don't do this. Uh, don't don't come into Israel and bring reptiles into the country. Uh, two reasons. One, they don't like it, and you're going to end up in jail, as you would in most countries. Two, Israel has enough reptiles already. There are plenty of lizards in Israel. Anywhere you go, you can find a lizard in Israel. If you really want lizards that bad, you can find them all over the place. And snakes, come on, guys. Yeah, guys. Yeah, and if I were this dude, I would not be putting my hand inside a bag to pull a snake out. Okay. All right. And <laughs> if you're going to come to Israel, whether you're an Israeli or from somewhere else, don't smuggle animals into the country. It's not worth it. You'll probably get arrested. And especially do not smuggle lizards and snakes. Okay? Israel has enough lizards and snakes, as is. Do not need foreign species introduced. Do not need snakes on the loose in the airport or any other such thing. Can we just stay away from reptiles in general? Especially snakes. Can we just can we just not do that? Can we just stay very clear of reptiles? I'm sure you've gotten a feeling as to how I feel about this already. All right, I think that's it for today. Guys, we need your help. We're trying to get the truth out about Israel to the world, and we cannot do it on our own. Like I said at the beginning, we put a lot of work into these videos, uh, but it, to a certain extent, it depends on you. It depends on you sharing them with your friends, uh, helping build us up on YouTube and other social media platforms by subscribing and following and all that good stuff. As always, tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening in the land of Israel. We'll be back Monday through Friday with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.